friends, gentle alumni, current staff members, current students, people I have not seen for years, some whom I have not seen for one year, and a few of you I have never met. Welcome. <laughs> and, and maybe a few I actually recognize, yes. Uh, welcome to the DECO Alumni Day. It's great to see you uh, again. Um, my name is Jakob Grosimus, and I'm the head of DECO at the moment. Uh, my time will you, with you today will be fairly brief. I'm going to talk for 15 minutes, and uh, then we'll get to the real meat of the matter, uh, which is a lot of talks, both from externals uh, and internals here at DECO, uh, with all of the cool things we're doing. So, the plan for today, um, before the food, that, that, that's the bottom thing, right? <laughs> um, before the food, we have lots of reports about current research um, and, and other things that occupy us here. For the first quarter of an hour, I'll try to give you an overview of the state of affairs, uh, and then we'll move on to uh, the people who actually create value, uh, namely Search, Boys, Carsten, Barry, and, and Valkyrie. Uh, and Joanna, uh, of course. And, and I think, Joanna, you will be the last person to speak today. So when Joanna is done, you basically just go out and eat and drink and have fun. But not before. But not before. <laughs> not before Joanna's done. That's very, very important. Um, so <laughs> it falls to me to give an overview of, of affairs. But first, some practical information. Toilets can be found in the basement hall just in front of the mosaics at Auditorium 1. Auditorium 1 is that way, quite a bit that way, actually. And then to the basement, uh, and then for the toilets. If some of you are really uh, creative, you might be able to break into the math department. They have toilets right over there, but, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> um, so, the outer entrance door to this entire building complex uh, remains closed. If you need to go outside for any reason, <clears throat> remember to get an entrance card. I think Tina is out there yeah. uh, and can hand them out. Outside, yeah, yeah. Uh, or ask somebody, <laughs> ask somebody to help you get in. We are of course friendly with all of our, of, of our alumni, and our alumni are all friendly with each other. So ask anyone, and, and hopefully they'll let you in. Um, ask Inge for help. Inge, please raise your hand. Inge is the mastermind of the alumni day. She'll be here all evening, and she'll be right here at the center of the front row in case you need her. Uh, the reception is a self-service buffet with seating and tables. Um, we have reserved some tables with signs indicating uh, various spans of years for alumni. Most of them are open to all, of course, but we indicate a few where, uh, where people might want to gather, especially very recent alumni uh, and not quite so recent alumni. Um, <laughs> So join people from your own year uh, of enrollment, these tables will just sit anywhere. Right, so let me uh, talk about the state of affairs at DECO. Um, this is going to be a very management e-talk, which means that, again, the actual value, which is typically best conveyed in a qualitative manner, that will be done by researchers, uh, that we'll see in a moment, and I'll just show you some graphs, because that's how managers end up thinking. Um, but thankfully, these graphs are really great. So. In 2022, we accepted 530 new bachelor students. Uh, this is more than ever before uh, in most of the education that, that we are part of. Uh, some of you who are <laughs> some of you who are uh, alumni from a few years ago might remember that we used to have only one educational program at bachelor's level, namely computer science or basic. Uh, program, but we have many more at the moment. Um, we have computer science and economy and machine learning and data science here at, um, at our own faculty. We also have communication and IT and health and informatics at the Faculty of Humanities, respectively at the Faculties of Health, and we contribute about 50% of the teaching there. Um, the positive story is we are enrolling more people than ever before, and hopefully at the end we'll also uh, create some value for society by actually having them graduate. Um, CS programs make up about 19% of new students at the science faculty, so about one in five new students uh, here at the Faculty of Science have something to do with computer science. Across all of those programs, we have an enrollment of about one-third women. So this is more than before, 
Um, but we are still trying to improve that, especially for our program in computer science, where we've been trying to push that number uh, above 20%. And we still have a lot to learn. For instance, in machine learning and data science, we actually had a slight decrease in the number of women. We think this is because we are not marketing that educational program right, so we're going to look into that uh, in the following years. Um, so, those are the people who go in, right? But we also have some people who graduate. And, and the horrible thing about using words like production and so on is that we tend to think of ourselves as a sausage factory. <laughs> But that's not the way to think about people. Um, so, uh, in terms of the way that, that the faculty of science, you know, the terms they use is like production. But, but trust me, we don't view current students or alumni as sausages. We do view you as people. So, the relevant uh, graph is over here, uh, the rightmost one. So, the purple, dark blue, purple, purple, yeah. I'm colorblind. This is, this is not easy, okay? <laughs> the, the, the purple uh, vertical bar here is, uh, is computer science. So basically, the bachelor's degree in datology is called in Danish. Um, and the other bands are the educations that we contribute to. Um, and as you can see, at least, we still have quite some growth in the computer science area with, with uh, the bachelor's thesis that uh, or bachelor's students graduate. Um, we also have a very steady number of people graduating from communication and IT, and we have a, a, a bit of some, some wobble uh, in some of the others, but we're looking into that in order to improve it. There's lots and lots of educational programs in IT in general, and computer science specifically in the Copenhagen area. But we hope to be able to increase this number uh, to, to get more people into society uh, who knows about computer science. We also hope to actually get the funding um, and for the master's level, or Kent Skit Desolgi in Danish, uh, it is a similar but, but spectacularly more impressive story at the moment. We are producing more, uh, more masters or, or candidates than, than ever before. And this is mostly across the spectrum, a bit, again, with a bit of a wobble in some of the smaller educational programs we're contributing to. We know that our graduates are wanted. So we try to create more of them. That also creates more alumni. So that's a, hopefully a, a great thing also for you. Um, to sustain this and to expand this, we also need to create more income. And I'm sorry if I sound not like a, an academic or a professor, but, but a bit like a business manager. But, but this, is, this is a modern necessity uh, in universities. So. Um, this is the, roughly the deco financial status over the last couple of years. So the rightmost thing is 2022, our estimate for what's going to happen this year. And the sort of penultimate rightmost thing here uh, is what happened in the fiscal year 2021. So the light purple <laughs> bar um, is what's called ordinary income. So ordinary income is basically what we get from the government and the university for teaching. And as you can see, that is weirdly stable, even though we've been sort of growing in, uh, in intake for the last couple of years. And that's due to lots of things. Uh, one thing is the government maybe not giving a lot of money to the university and sometimes also actually decreasing the amount of money, but, but also the way the University of Copenhagen internally distributes funds. So uh, one way of offsetting that is getting so-called project income. So this is via a research project that we apply for an open competition uh, from the European Union, from private foundations like the Carlsberg or Willem Foundation, or from government agencies. It is also income that we get when we, for instance, have targeted courses for Novo Nordisk, where we try to teach them, for instance, some data science that's hard to learn elsewhere. Um, and we hope to get a bit more growth or stability, at least, in our finances in, in order to actually create more alumni. Um, this is something where we are typically at the mercy of the government for the light purple uh, part. So the more we increase the red part, the, the more independent we are. At least that's, that's how we like to think of it. Um, then there's growth in staff. And, and let me say that it's not a goal in itself for any public institution to grow in staff. If anyone tells you otherwise, they are basically lying or have a misconception. The, the reason why 
I and we think that DECO should grow is to create more knowledge and more people going into industry and, and into the public domain knowing about computer science and IT in general. So growth for its own sake is not something we do. We actually have a purpose for this. Um, the rightmost column here is 2021. And as you can see, we are uh, scaling up in the number of people. Um, the top most, I'm, I'm not going to say the names of these colors because I'll get them wrong. The, the top most block is administrative personnel. We try to keep that uh, in the sort of same proportion to the scientific staff uh, throughout the years. But that's, of course, also growing when we hire new professors and so on. Um, then there are external lecturers and so on in the orange part. Um, we have had a remarkable growth in PhD students over the years. Truly remarkable. Uh, not just because we have to, but also because we want to. We are spanning lots of area in areas in computer science, including very practical ones, also requiring lots of lab work and lab space, where we need many people in general. Uh, and we are scaling up at all three levels of academic seniority, from assistant to associate and to full professors. Um, so, in case you are not completely familiar with it, assistant and associate professors are what's called adjunct and lecture in Danish. So, we are still growing, um, and we hope to, uh, to do that in general. Um, I'll be done with the growth graphs in a moment. I, I just very much like them because they're increasing. <laughs> um, so there's this, this thing called scope with the wonderful days that are oh, uh, So this is essentially one year of full-time study work for one student. So the way I like to think of this is that, that uh, for, if we take all of this, so the entire thing, including the mustard yellow uh, and kind of black but not really uh, bar up there, is that, that we are creating around 1,100 of these student years. The way I like to think of it is that we have one student, not many students, one student, and in time compression, we are actually teaching that student for more than 1,000 years every year. <laughs> um, tr trust me, the metaphor gets funnier and funnier the, the way, way you think about it. But the point is, this is also increasing. And this is, of course, a function of intake in students, um, but, but also, I, I'd like to think of student diligence. They are actually working. It's not just us teaching. Right. So, some various initiatives that we are uh, keen on at the moment and that we are involved in. Uh, we are part of a national research uh, center called DIREC, um, funded by the Innovation Foundation uh, in Computer Science with basically every uh, computer science department in Denmark. So for those of you who've been here a really long time or graduated a long time ago, you might remember some rivalry between East and West in Denmark. That still happens. <laughs> but we also like to collaborate with them. So this is, this is a great thing. Um, we also, together with more, uh, several other universities, have a pioneer center for artificial intelligence. You're going to meet Search later on. Um, and we'll talk about, I think, a specific thing within the, within the pioneer center. This is a wonderful initiative also spanning uh, computer science in Denmark. We have the Digital Tech Summit coming up, again with all of the other universities and a host of um, various companies in Bellasindel uh, in October 25 and 26. Uh, this is a great event with lots of talks both from industry and, and from uh, the sciences, and I think there are still tickets that can be bought. In case you are interested, talk to Anas, whom I'll introduce a bit later. Um, we also have business collaboration and innovation projects. You're going to meet the team in a moment. They are the ones actually also sort of arranging the alumni, alumni day. So uh, they're a great bunch of people. Um, and we are currently involved in scaling up teaching computer science to other studies, other departments, the Department of Plant Sciences, uh, the Department of Food Sciences. Um, and this needs to be done in order to, to get digitalization out there, at least in the way that, that we think of digitalization. Um, and we also do the research in tomorrow's technologies. Actually, can we say the day after tomorrow, because that, that's a bit further ahead, right? And you'll hear lots about that in a moment from some of our great researchers. Um, and another thing we are interested in is, that, is the diversity agenda, uh, broadly construed from, from not just from the point of view of, of gender, but, but diversity in general. 
which has been the subject of multiple projects at DECO at the moment, and we're also going to hear Carsten Lessen from specialist on neurodiversity a bit later today. Um, we've been a bit in the news, let me just do a little bit more slowly. Uh, we've been a bit in the news. Um, we try to communicate our research, and we also try to make sure that everyone knows we're actually creating value. It's probably easy for you as alumni, as students, because you're kind of in it already, and you see the value of both basic and applied research. But again, in the modern political world, especially in Denmark, it's important to communicate the great things we do. Um, so we had plenty of stories in the news. Uh, for instance, this is not necessarily a positive story, but the <laughs> uh, so our computers are sexist towards uh, both female and male uh, politicians. Um, but, but the positive thing is that we can actually quantify this using, for instance, techniques from, from natural language processing. Um, we are opening a new education together with the physics and math department here and the Technical University of Denmark on quantum information science, um, which is going to fly, hopefully, uh, in the summer of next year. Um, we are looking at many things, bias and so on, is, is really popular in the media at the moment. So taking some of the foundational work we do in machine learning and then applying it to cases that are of societal importance is awesome. And it's also something that, that the general public is interested in. And we have lots and lots and lots of other stories. Here's a, here's a small selection of them from various uh, places at DICU on many different perspectives showcasing that we're not just uh, only communicating things that, that are sort of immediate importance to politicians and so on. We actually try to cover as much of the breadth of DECO as we can when communicating uh, with the news. And I think that is more or less the current state. So you saw lots of graphs with things improving. Um, this is necessary, not just for us, but also for the rest of society. And it's a wonderful story. I, I hope we can keep doing that. We'll work for it anyway. Now, I've spoken enough, but I'm, I actually have one more thing to say. Um, one of the things we've done in recent years, actually during Corona, <laughs> was to create a specific section, like a little organizational unit within DECO uh, for business collaboration and innovation. Um, and we have uh, Anna's Pell Schütz, who is this, this uh, younger, more cheerful, more handsome version of, of me with the same, <laughs> the same, um, same aesthetics for beard and hair, <laughs> and so on, j j just a lot better, um, uh, as the head of it. And, and he has built a team of, of three full time employees working in various aspects of, of Digo's collaboration outside, not just the Digo Business Club, but also uh, running part of the science uh, AI center. Uh, doing innovation projects and collaborating on research with industry, and also, very importantly, the Alumnus Association. So, so you guys, they are also in charge of it. Um, if you meet any of these people today, just give them a hand because they're the ones that they take care of you and take care of everything tonight. But I will uh, leave it to Anas, who, before he worked here, has worked in lots of places, including Copenhagen FinTech, the Technical University, and so on, and is an industry veteran an all-round cool guy. Anas will actually introduce our speakers and he will also moderate any discussions and questions you might have. Uh, so please treat him well. In case you need me, I'll be right there next to Inge uh, and I'll be talking to you uh, outside after seven o'clock. So please give Anas a hand. Take it away, Anas.